What up, YouTubers and YouTubettes? So today I'm going to be making and running some TLC plates. Uh, in a future video, in a future video, in a past video, I made silica gel G, which is silica gel um, with gypsum in it, which G is for the gypsum. And um, so we're going to make the TLC plates and we're going to run thin layer chromatography. And so now when you run thin layer chromatography, if your solution is colorless, you would need to add like aluminum oxide to it or there's a couple other ones you can add to it to to give it a color for when you look at it at, with a UV light. Now the solution I'm going to be testing is colored um, and so I don't need to add aluminum to it and so also what I'm gonna what I'm trying to do is see if I can de-protect de an NBOC group uh, uh, from a protection amine and so I don't know if I can or not but I've done a lot of research and I'm trying with hydrochloric acid and um, methanol and so let's get started all right I got some silica gel G here I meshed it to about 350, 400 mesh, and now I'm going to add a little bit of water and make it into a slurry. Mm, added a little bit too much water, I think. And I got these, um, these are microscope slides, and so what I'm going to do is pour the slurry onto these slides, and try, you pour it on, and then you kind of hold your slide at an angle, so it'll run down it towards your hand, and try to get as equal as a layer as possible, if you can. Here I got four of them, I did two fairly thin, and then two thicker. Um, and I'm just going to try all four of them to see, because these two I did while I was a little runnier, and these two I did while I was a little thicker. And so I'm going to wait for them all to dry, and then try running them. And so now, something to you want to think about is, when you grab your slides, you want to grab them from the sides like this, because you don't want to get fingerprints on it, because that will take away from how well they'll work. And... um. Yeah, so that's why you just hold them from the side and then shake it down. And then if you use a stick to help uh, move it, you don't ever touch the innards. You only touch the side well, at like an angle. So, I mean, you'd be like sh sh around it to help get it on the edges or whatever. And so now um, you, you can, I'm going to wait for these to air dry. Um, well, I'll wait for two to air dry and I'll wait for two, I'm going to, throw them in the oven and s try them because I'm kind of in a rush to do a sample of what I want to test these on and so that way I can do a, a quick sample and then try it again in 24 hours and so anyways I'm going to throw two of these in the oven at about 120 degrees and probably take an hour or two for them to dry and I will be back at that point something I wanted to point out about silica gel is it's very dusty and the dust is very bad for you it'll give you silicosis so be careful around this dust it will screw up your life big time now I got three spots on this plate you can see them from right to left and so I've got starting from the right I've got um, 100% unreacted then in the middle, I've got my, hopefully my, what I want to remain. And then on my left, I've got the other side of what should be my byproduct. And so now I'm going to put these three into a container with a solution. Um, let me digress for a second. So now my silica gel G is doesn't have enough binder in it and so I can't mark it with a pencil it, it just knocks it off instead and so what you should do is mark this about a half inch up um, from the bottom or half a centimeter or whatever and prescribe a line 
and then from that line down will be the amount where your solution will be in the in your um your eluding chamber and so then you'd mark each one of these one two and three and so now I'm going to put them into my cup with liquid in it the solvent and then I'm going to watch it as the solvent will run all the way up and as soon as it's about a half a centimeter from the top I'm going to take this out of it, my elution chamber and then let it dry and um, then I'll look at it and then where the these travel up will make different marks hopefully and that will show different compounds being that they'll have different marks or where they stop that rising. In my chamber here I have one to one ethyl acetate and petroleum ether which they recommend to use hexane but hexane and petroleum ether are dang near the same thing and as you can see I've got it in there and it is below where my three dots are in there and so now I'm gonna put a watch glass on top <laughs> nice watch glass huh and now I'm gonna watch the um, gases or the compound uh, god damn I'm gonna watch the solution travel up the plate and as you watch it travel up if it if you're having a problem with it going up something you can do is put a filter paper in here and that'll help with the gases in the chamber to help it go up better and easier all right i am about half a centimeter to the top and so now I'm gonna take my plate out and let it dry another thing you want to do is mark where where the solution was on top when you took it out all right so you can faintly faintly tell where they've gone to um, my number one top is right here my number two's top. Oh, come on, light, show me again. Went all the way up to here. And my number three's top went to right there. Which this one was the one that I want. And so now what I'm going to do is you measure from this to your starting line, and that will give you your RF value. And so now. If you know what your compounds are you're looking for, you go online and you find what their RF values are for your known compound, and then you compare them to what you've got in here. And that should give you a good answer of if your uh, compound is pure, not pure, or whatever. And so I'm going to go find that out right now. Alright, so one thing I wanted to point out on this real quick was if you go back and look at when I started one and three they my dots weren't at the exact like an exact straight line across and so my one started below where my three started and so that's why those two are the same and so for my number two my RF value is where it should be and so that makes me happy <laughs> that is a good thing and so that proves that um, hydrochloric acid and methanol can remove the NBOC group from a, pr a protection NBOC group and so that's good that means that I deprotected it just what I was trying to do and so that is a good thing one thing I wanted to point out is that um, the light you would use to look at these would be a short wave UV light uh, if you look online and look at what those are they're actually pretty expensive and hard to get and so um, I need to figure out you can add dyes to doing this kind of stuff so that way you don't have to have uh, that kind of light to do it I mean because this was a yellow compound at start and it was still hard to see um, I could just barely see it with the naked eye and the camera as far as I could tell couldn't even see it at all and so 
either way though it worked and i'm happy with the result so anyways till next time guys